The Seattle Mariners have acquired Jorge Polanco from the Minnesota Twins in a trade that sends four players back to Minnesota, two from the Major League roster, Anthony Desclafani, Mariner legend of legends, and Justin Topa, and then two prospects as well, outfielder Gabriel Gonzalez and right-handed pitching prospect Jared Bowen. Very interesting trade, one that I liked a lot upon hearing who they were getting, one that I still like. I think this is a, a good transaction, but one that um, I think Twins fans, Twins fans should be pretty happy as well. We'll talk about it. Really quick, I want to talk about Simply Seattle. Very best in Seattle sports gear. Awesome stuff for the Mariners, Seahawks, Kraken, Huskies, Seahawks, Supersonics. You can find it all. Once you find it all, use code MOLLYWAP15 at checkout. It takes 15% off your order. It's an awesome deal. Uh, link in the description to make it nice and easy for you. Thank you again, www.simplyseattle.com. All right, so let's talk about Jorge Polanco. So Jorge Polanco was limited to 80 games last year, and we will talk about that. But in those 80 games, he was pretty solid. He was able to put up an OPS plus of 115. I'll give you the total line right now. 255, 335, 454, and 343 plate appearances. 14 homers and four stolen bases. Career OPS of 780, that is an OPS plus of 111. A reminder that 100 is average, so a slightly above average to not, you know, slightly above average. I think that's a fair description for him offensively. Maybe a little inaccurate. Like he's had some years, especially when he's been healthy, where he's been well above that. The breakout year came in 2021. Uh, 826 OPS with a 503 slugging percentage, 33 homers and 11 stolen bases. 2019, he hits 295 with an 841 OPS with 22 homers. 2020, he struggles the year, you know, the year of small samples, 55 games only, a 658 OPS, but he bounced back very nicely in 2021. The biggest concern for me with Jorge Polanco is this is a guy who's only played in 184 games over the last two years out of 324. It's not great. Uh, it is not great at all. Limited to basically almost exactly a half a season last year. Availability is important. Now, some of his availability last year has to do with the fact that while he was struggling a little bit, wasn't an everyday player. And it's worth pointing out that one of the reasons Jorge Polanco was available is Jorge Polanco was not guaranteed a starting spot with Minnesota. I think he ultimately would have because I can't see Minnesota playing paying the salary of Jorge Polanco to be a utility player. But they have a lot of infielders, and a lot of those infielders, I think, are more talented than Jorge Polanco, offensively and defensively, especially defensively. We'll talk about it. Let's look at Polanco's Savant page last year. It's an interesting one because there's a lot of above average here. Well above average in barrel percentage, 13.8. The 14 homers were pretty unlucky based on that. Like, especially when you look at the expected slugging percentage of 482 and a sweet spot, sweet spot percentage. That's a tough one to say. 94th percentile may hit that sweet spot 39.6% of the time. That's a really strong number. Walked in 10.5% of his plate appearances. That's also well above average. He's a very good offensive player. We're talking about, talent-wise, the best second baseman they've had since Robinson Cano. And there's a pretty big gap, I think, between Cano to Polanco and then everybody else, I would say. Now, Polanco, uh, Robinson Cano is, if not for, uh, you know, what happened, is a first ballot Hall of Famer. Jorge Polanco is not that. Let's just get that out of the way. But Jorge Polanco is a really good offensive player. Um, switch hitter. It's been better as a right-handed hitter for most of his career. Has had some reverse platoon stuff. I don't think that's a huge worry. I don't think you're talking about a platoon guy. I think you are talking about a guy who's going to play every day for the Mariners. And I think that's good. <laughs> I mean, especially considering what they gave up. I think that's really good. Um, Taking a look at some of these other numbers and just looking at the splits. Let's Let's pause while I pull that up. So like I said, for most of his career, he's been better against uh, right-handed pitching than left-handing, but last year was not that case. Uh, 775 OPS against righties and 252 plate appearances, 824 and 91 plate appearances. Now, 
91 plate appearances in a whole heck of a lot. But remember, this guy was limited to 80 games last year. Uh, home and away, this is kind of concerning. Uh, at home, the fairly friendly, not super, fr- like, it is what it is. 876 OPS at home, 698 away. It's a pretty big difference. And look, we've seen lots of guys struggle when they were playing in friendlier confines and go to Seattle and struggle. You can't use that as the ultimate decision maker for not bringing guys in. You just can't. Uh, first half last year, a 741 OPS, only at 291 on base percentage, much better in the second half, a 361 on base percentage, an 817 OPS by month. 923 in a very small sample in March, uh, 733 in May, 474 in June, but he was limited to only seven games. July, he only played in three games, 536. Really good in August with an 887 OPS, 283, 398, 489. And in October, he was just fine. September, October, 244, 326, 449. None of that really stands out to me, like in a good way. There's nothing that says to me that like, oh boy, this is problematic based on this or that. Um, He's a good offense player. He is not elite. We're not talking about a top five second baseman, but I think at his best, he's a top 10. And he's a massive upgrade over what they were getting at second base last year. He is a massive upgrade over what they were projected to get with Josh Rojas. Let's just be honest here. I like Josh Rojas. I think he is a very nice utility player. Jorge Polanco is a significant upgrade over him. And he's going to have to be. He's going to have to be because, one, the Mariners just can't afford to get zero production at second base again. Although, Josh Rojas was decent. And he's still going to be here, and I imagine he'll get some playing time, you know, unless he's traded. But they can't afford to have second base for a second consecutive year just be an absolute dumpster fire. And I don't think, as long as Polanco is healthy, I don't think you're going to get that. Let me tell you my biggest concern about Polanco. It's defensively. He's not a very good defensive player. He is not terrible. The numbers don't really back up the, it's not terrible. He probably profiles better at third base, except his arm's not that great. I'd be curious to see if maybe Seattle gives him a look there, but I imagine he's going to play second base. That is not a great double play combination, in my humble estimation. Offensively, sure. I think that's one of the better ones. I think you could put it in the, Top six of the American League. That's good. That's really good. Defensively, it's not my favorite. It's not my favorite. I've I've talked to a few scouts in just a quick uh, go through here. Mixed opinions. But my eye test and some of the metrics that I've looked at Not in love with him defensively. Not in love with that up the middle. Like what you get from center field and catcher a lot. Second base and shortstop, not so much. It is what it is. They they need the offensive help. And if you're not willing to go spend the big bucks, getting a guy like this makes an awful lot of sense. The Mariners did give some stuff up. <laughs> Let's talk about what they're losing for the Major League roster. Let's start with Desclafani, who never pitches for the Mariners. My one regret here is I was looking forward to calling him Anthony Gwen Stefani. Again, I think it's a term of endearment. It's not a huge loss, in my humble estimation. Hurts to depth. You know, maybe that's one of the reasons why you sign in Austin Vaugh. You knew a trade like this was possible. If not probable but you know i think bryce miller and brian will are better pitchers than anthony discofani at this point so not a huge loss there justin topa 
That's significant. It puts a lot of pressure on Brash and Munoz. Justin Topot, I know it wasn't great at the end. For the majority of the year, Justin Topot was fantastic. And I know a lot of you are going to point out and just say, well, Chris, the one thing the Mariners have done is they've developed relief pitching. And you're right. You're not wrong whatsoever. But the Seattle Mariner bullpen was not bulletproof last year. On the contrary. And you're taking away maybe the most consistent reliever they had last year. Not the most talented, but the most consistent. That is not insignificant. That is not insignificant whatsoever. It does remind me of the Eric Swanson trade a little bit. You know, you have to give from a position of strength sometimes to get. I don't I don't hate it. I don't love it. I think it's a really nice get for that Minnesota bullpen too. Prospects. Uh, Jared Bowen is really interesting. I talked to some folks who think he is a top three pitching prospect in this system. They also quickly mentioned it was darning with faint phrase a little bit. Um, but he pitched really well last year. Um, looks like a guy who can develop into a mid-rotation starter. I disagree that he's one of the top three or even top five pitching prospects in the system. But not a bad get. Not a bad get, especially if you consider him the third piece of this trade. I think Descalfani is pretty clearly the fourth. Gabriel Gonzalez is really interesting. And somebody that I think you could rank anywhere from third to fifth in the system but there's no denying his upside. He is a player that is making top 100 lists and justifiably so. He's done nothing but hit. Some current concerns about the positional value. Yeah. Um, I don't know if he has the elite upside of some of the other players in the system, like the big time shortstops, Lazaro Montez. He doesn't match those guys. His floor matches anybody. And I got a text immediately from somebody who works for the Twins that was very happy that Gabriel Gonzalez was coming over. And I don't blame him. It's a really good get. This was a lot. This was a significant haul that the Seattle Mariners are giving up. And I admire them for doing so. I think it's important for them to make moves like this. Obviously, you have to get better. It is... Not okay to be average next year. But this is a haul. And it hurts their depth. And it's a risky thing considering Polanco's health. But if he is the player that you get for last year even, especially if you get the 2021 version, it's well worth it. It's well worth it. Here is your thoughts. But before you give me your thoughts, please hit like and subscribe. Was excited that I got something to talk about. It's been a rough, rough couple of weeks, as I talked about in my last video. But yeah, what do you think? Uh, Jorge Polanco, where are you hitting him in the order? First, second, third, military? Uh, you know how that one usually goes. Um, Yeah, Jorge Polanco is a Seattle Mariner. Very curious what your guys' thoughts are. Bye. Oh, and don't make fun of this. I forgot to shave. Shut up.